Lakers still really haven't done squat this summer, but LeBron and AD won a gold medal. Let's talk about it. What's up, y'all? I'm Kyle Downey. This is the Sports Download. And yeah, the Lakers still really didn't do anything besides re-signing Max Christie, drafting Dalton Connect. They really have not done anything. And not that they haven't tried. I've heard reports, seen reports that, you know, Anthony Irwin has been putting out and other reporters that there was potentials to try to get to try to get um Jeremy Grant, try to get Kyle Kuzma, all these deals, some uh, forwards from Brooklyn, but they have not been able to do anything. Obviously, it's not ideal. People that are late, cover the Lakers are debating whether it's a step back or whether the team has gotten any better. I just think if you look at it, you know, I, I think I agree with Anthony Irwin where the team did get kind of worse. I mean, we have to see the potential of not having Darvin Ham to sabotage games. I believe that if if Redick runs the team better than Ham did, then we could have possibly five more years. Five, We could have possibly five more wins. But that's still an if because Redick is a rookie head coach and he has former head coaches with him in Scott Brooks and Nate McMillan, but he's still a rookie head coach and, you know, we're putting our faith in them. Hopefully. I mean, he's very smart, man knows how to communicate a really good basketball mind. He's played the game, played the game at a high level for, I think about 15 years or so, but still, and definitely going to want to hope, and pray for good health for LeBron and AD because LeBron and AD were very healthy last year. They played 70 game, 17 games or more each. Yesterday, AD, I mean, excuse me, last season, AD had six six games short of a full season. So that's incredible. Um, and I believe that LeBron is still amazing. I mean, look, we just saw him do it in the Olympics. And AD is still amazing. But uh, would have loved to improve the team. Now there's still time before the season starts. Uh, it's October. It's August now, and the season starts in October, like uh, mid to late October, and you know the preseason starts in September. But they still haven't done anything. The biggest thing they have not done is trade D'Angelo Russell. And I like D'Angelo. He dr- was drafted by the Lakers, and I love that he was able to come back. But the problem is, is that he becomes unplayable unplayable in the playoffs. And I saw a tweet that he tweeted out and he deleted. Somebody said, I believe it's somebody I follow, I think it's BJ, BG the Saint, said that, well, y'all don't know, D'Lo gets hot like Steph just did. And Steph, you know, got on fire in the Olympics in the last two games. And... Uh, yes, that's true. D'Lo can get that hot, but when he's cold, he is unplayable because, yes, he can play make, but he on the defensive end, he can be hunted and cannot guard. Um, you know, uh, he can try, but it doesn't seem like this year. I think he tried to play defense, but it's just not his thing. And so he has to be a flamethrower. That's why he's paid for. He has to make shots and. In the playoffs, he just hasn't shown up. So, but speaking of LeBron and AD, LeBron and AD did ball out and get a gold medal. They balled out. Obviously, it's a star-studded cast of LeBron, AD, Steph, Kevin Durant, you know, Anthony Edwards. This team's so good that Jason Tatum barely got any run, and Tyrese Halliburton didn't get any run at all, and then he had that hilarious tweet of, when you don't do nothing on the on the group project, but you still get an A. <laughs> Excellent tweet. Very, very funny tweet. But that's how good the team was, is that Tyrese Halliburton is an all-star, a superstar player in his own right and didn't see the court, like, barely, unless it was, like, a super blowout. But we did see that the world is better, uh, especially France. I didn't know exactly how well France would do. I know that they have uh, Wemby and Gobert and Gobert can be good sometimes, but in playoff situations, he can be played off the floor defensively as a big, uh, but yeah, France, France kept it close and it was a close game. France is also good, uh, in women's basketball. I was watching the USA women and they were up by 10 
and then but then USA came back and beat them by a narrow margin. So the world is playing basketball out here, and so everybody's also been talking about in four years, in 2028 in LA, you know, USA basketball is gonna have to get their stuff together, you know, um, because LeBron could play. Uh, I don't put it past him. I'm not gonna doubt him, but he most likely won't. And he said, I don't see myself doing that, which, you know, bookmark that tweet. Uh, maybe he will. Steph could play. Uh, that's one that maybe he could do one last hurrah. He'll be he'll be uh, 38, I mean, in four years, I think, or something like that. Or no, he'll be 39. So maybe he could play because his game is not above the ground. He doesn't jump that. He doesn't dunk that much. He's more of a shooter. Kevin Durant probably won't, though, right? 39 years old, he'll probably be, and he's had injuries and things like that. Like, LeBron is a cyborg, so he's, he's like, an alien. So we'll have to see if he's going to be playing. But uh, the young guys, I mean, I think Jason Tatum was on the team uh, three years ago in Tokyo, 2021. But beside, you know, and he looked, I don't know, he had some weird moments where he's missing shots and he's, like, looking – looking like he I guess he needed to get a rhythm going or something but uh he has some some uh weird moments uh had a couple dunks or whatever but so he's gonna ha he's gonna still be young he's gonna have to step up uh in four years you know you got Anthony Edwards that dude is amazing on defense and an incredible offensive player and things like that and Halliburton could play next time and things like that guys like that and um we'll see who else you know who else is young and upcoming? Uh, I have to. I'd have to think about it. But this is the la This is most likely the last that we'll see. It was the only time too. We'll see Steph, LeBron, and Durant, and it was beautiful. Honestly, like I didn't think that I would get emotional. I was listening to my guys Jenkins and Jenkins and Jones podcast, and they were saying how like it's a favorite era of basketball. That's what Tyler was saying, and John said that as well, and Mike echoed it as well, um, and. You know, I think to me, I'm I'm always thinking of NBA as Lakers first because I'm a Lakers fan. But I do love the game of basketball with a passion, and I do love the NBA. But to me, and then I started liking Braun a little bit before he became a Laker, and then obviously when he became a Laker, accepted it, it welcomed him with open arms, and then he obviously brought us to a title. So I really appreciate Braun. Uh, but, um, oh yeah. And AD, I don't know if AD will play in four years. Side note though, because, you know, injuries and things like that. And, um, if he's a Laker, I probably don't want him to. Um, but yeah, so, but going back this game, this, this, uh, run with the Olympics, like it was beautiful to watch because not only are they the best team, in the world and the best team possibly ever assembled with all these legends. But I really do love LeBron. Uh, I really am a fan of him. It's different than Kobe because Kobe uh, was there forever and Kobe, you know, childhood connection. But with Bron, like, I appreciate him because he saved the Lakers. So it's different, but I love him also. And he saved the Lakers from being bad and he brought us a championship, him and AD. And then, but you got KD and Steph, who I always see as villains because they're always against my team. And I've all, I rooted for Braun in 2016 against Steph um, and against the Warriors because I just wanted them to be taken down, but they were too good when they had KD. So they were villains, but I like, I like Steph on a personal level and I like Durant on a personal level. And, you know, I don't agree with him going to the Warriors in the first place, but uh, that's, you know, it's years ago. I, I've, I'll let it go. But I did get emotional when Le there was a play in the France game where LeBron came down, had the ball at the top of the key. Steph cuts, Steph cuts baseline, ha catches the ball, goes through the paint, and then kicks it out to KD for a three. And I started tearing up, and I would not have thought I would have done that. And it just really is going to be an end of an era uh, soon. It is going to be an end of an era soon. And it was just beautiful to watch, to see those guys, to see them play together. And just like, wow, these are the legends of, you know, my 20s. And it was beautiful. 
Follow me at the sports download, y'all. Peace, love, and God bless.